name is Artastic and in this episode I'm going to be talking about time management tips for our educators. So let's dive in on this episode and let's go Artastic. most energized self in the very early morning. Um, and that might not be true for you, but just think about it. You're gonna be even more tired at the end of the day after all the things have happened. So I think that the best thing to do is to arrive earlier than you would ex normally arrive. So do all your prepping and planning in the morning for the next day, do like your marking, whatever it is that you're going to do at the end of the day, you're just gonna flip that and do that before school. So that way it's ready to go. And then at the end of the day, you just get to get in your car and just leave and go home. So you're not gonna use that time to just add in more stuff. Instead, you're just going to get up and you're gonna go. Uh, and that way you can have more time at home, more free time to yourself, doing the things that you love, and that's really important too. Spending time with your family, your pets, whatever it is, just doing your own hobbies, it doesn't matter. Um, it's time for you. <laughs> it's your time, you're, not, it's, you're off the clock. Go do your thing. So that's my recommendation. When I realized that, because that was a mistake I made when I was a new teacher. I would stay till like 7 p.m. I'm like, look at how awesome I am. Do you think that the district knows or cares? No, no, they don't. So don't do it. <laughs> um, do it. Uh, I'm there when I was there before. The, usually the principal was there as well in the morning. I'd say hi, we get our chat and get to know. They always know that I was always there doing the same work. I was way before everybody else. I just got done at a different time. And then I left when I needed to leave. Um, that way I was fresh when I was doing it. I was planning with it, open eyes and clear head. I wasn't tired. I can do better assessment and give better feedback because I wasn't exhausted. I wasn't just to the point where I was like, stamp, 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 sticker, sticker, sticker. Because that gives nothing. That gives the kids an absolutely no feedback, right? Um, so I did it at a fresh time. Uh, and then you um, are fresh and you can just go home and then you can re-energize for the next day because you never know what's going to happen when you're a teacher. All right, number two is to batch prep. So what I like to do in order to save time for me so I have more time for doing other things throughout the week um, is to batch everything. So it's called batching. That means you're gonna do all of one thing, the same thing all at once. So for instance, as a teacher, I would do all my day plans first and I would write two weeks worth of day plans. Then I would do, um, all my photocopying for those lessons that I was gonna teach in the, my day plans. I would do all my photocopying for like two weeks worth. And then I would do all my sorting into my bins so it was all ready to go all at once. And then I would do all my examples for artworks all at once. I'd do write all my lesson plans all at once um, for two weeks at a time. So that way I was always two weeks ahead. Um, and that way I was never rushed. If I had to be away and I was unexpectedly sick, it's okay, it doesn't matter. I don't have to freak out. It's already done, planned and detailed, and ready to go. Um, and and I was just ready. I was a lot focused, a lot more calmer, and then I had extra time to do the other things in my classroom, all the other things, and not feel like I was like, oh my gosh, I have all these things to do. Because I, now I did not have all these things to do. I actually saved time because I sat down and said, being like, okay, I'm going to do lesson plan, and then I'm going to do the example and then you're switching back and forth into different things you might as well while you have all your mess up do all your examples right you're not setting up and taking down and setting up and taking down while you're at your computer you might as well type up all your lesson plans or however you want to do it um, and it just makes it a lot easier all right so my question to you for this episode is where you struggle when it comes to time management please let me know in the comment section below the video and i'll do my best to help you out all right number three is that um, to have all your supplies in grab and go containers and trays for each table. So at every table, I recommend having a table tray, like a nice shallow tray, like a serving tray, get one at the dollar store. Um, you can color code them if you want to. Um, I, if you have like a Dollar Tree or whatever place has color, same things that are all in different colors, then you can do that if you want. Um, I used to do it with as art on a cart and I would just stack them all. Um, so I had a table tray for each table um, and then uh, all my materials, instead of keeping them in their original packaging, I would dump them out 
and they're never gonna go back in the way you want it or it's all gonna be messed up and it's not gonna be like the right amount of, you know, your perfect set of colors. You're gonna open them and there's gonna be like a whole bunch of reds in one, just like a whole bunch of random colors in another. And then some kids will get really great colors and some kids are gonna get like all peach and peach and brown and I don't know, blue, some just random things, right? So, um, instead of doing that, I just take them all out. I dump like four containers of pastels into one container from the dollar store. Um, and then do that for every amount for every table. That way there's an adequate amount. If they break, bonus. Now you have duplicates. Um, I turn off my heater. So now you have duplicates. Um, and then, um, you take all those and you put them into a larger rubber mat. So then I'll have all my smaller containers in a larger container that will fit on my shelves, right? So that way, and that will save oil pastels. So that way, if you're prepping, you'll be like, okay, oil pastels, where are they? Ah, oil pastel bin. Whoosh, bring down the rubber mat. Open the lid. You're gonna take out your your containers and go boom, 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 boom on your trays. Done. What else do you need for that lesson? Okay, paper. Grab your paper bin. Poof, poof, poof. Actually, I probably wouldn't do paper because. To be honest, I would just get kids to help hand that out. It's so much easier. Um, and they need movement sometimes. Okay, grab what else are new? Oil passes. Okay, watercolor paints. Boom, 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 boom. Trays on each table. And, um, oh, just one water container for each table because that's enough. So then I would just go grab a bucket or get one kid during the lesson to go grab a bucket, ice cream pail, a uh, full of water. This much only so that way if it falls or it's over. It's okay, um, it's not all over, it's not a giant bucket full. <laughs> um, and they don't tip as easy, right? Because it's lower center of gravity, it's larger, and it's easier to reach. Anyway, that's why I use ice cream buckets. And so you boom, 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 that's done. And yeah, so all you would have to do is grab your trays, put on your oil pastels, put on your watercolor paints, or whatever you're using, box crayons, felt markers, boom, set, grab one per, one child at each table can come up and grab their table tray for the day, right? You don't need to even go put them out. You can just get a kid to do it. <laughs> Done. Somebody, while that's happening, you grab you grab two other kids to go hand out the paper for the day. Done. They can help. <laughs> now you have solved that problem, and it looks nice and clean and organized. All right, next is to enlist student help for setup. So now, this is the next step, is that you can start off doing this, but uh, depending on the ages of the students um, or their uh, ability, so like sometimes you might have younger students who are really, really capable and independent of helping to be able to help. Um, you can just get your kids instead of you doing that. You can just be like, hey, um, the next class is going so and so, and who likes to help, right? Because sometimes, well, typically in every class, I notice that you always have one kid that says, hi, can I? can I help you with anything? And those are the kids you say, yes, absolutely, you can help me with this. You, this could be your job. Um, so and so, can you go and set the trays for the next class? Um, they're going to need be using wax crayons or whatever. And they can just grab the wax crayon tip, boom, 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 and set them all up. And then that way when the class enters, you can have one kid from each table go grab the trays. All right. The next thing is to have a timer. Um, so I would have a timer, like a large visual timer. You can just either just use a Google timer, that's fine, um, or whatever. Whatever timer you want, somewhere that is big and visible for everybody, not just you, but including the students to check out and see, and that will be for the length of work time. So start when class starts till when a cleanup starts. If that timer goes off, that's when cleanup is starts. So they can visually see how much time they have and you can also gauge your time a lot easier throughout the, the class, right? So, and some kids struggle with transition, so this is gonna help them as well. They're gonna be like, okay, I have to get started. Okay, class is gonna be over soon. Uh, I'm not wondering when it's gonna be over. I can see that I only have this much time and then I'm, I'm out of here, right? And they can prepare themselves mentally that they're gonna go back into the hallway, go and do a different subject, blah, 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 blah. You know, prepare themselves to transition. So I would have a visual timer and then Boom, timer's on, we start our lesson, we teach, we have kids do their work time, whatever it is, and then when that timer goes off, um, and you can gauge how fast or slow you need to go by how much time is left on the timer, right? So you're not like, oh my gosh, we gotta clean up right now, the other class is waiting outside, oh my gosh, everybody stop what you're doing, right? Because sometimes that happens. So to avoid that, you can be like, okay, timer, 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 and then, um, Kids, you can have a kid in the class be like, okay, Miss Mc, Miss or Mister or Mix, whatever it is, 
So and so, we only have two minutes left. Okay, camera's going off in two minutes, guys. So make sure you're doing your last whatever mass marks, making your last marks, and then make sure that you're gonna put your name on it. And next step is that I want you to now look at somebody else's paper at your table, and on the back, check for their name. And if they gave, wrote their name, you're going to draw a tiny smiley face beside their name. Now we can reinforce double checking names. Um, draw your aunt and, and and then and kids you're gonna demonstrate that the first time but kids I've never had a problem with kids like ruining the back of it. Just say pencil only, pencil only, draw a little happy face on the back. Um, to double check for the names. And um, are you gonna still have kids that forget their names? Absolutely. It is life. It's don't don't worry about it. It's life. They will they will move on, they will become adults. You will move on, you'll have new classes, and in those classes they will also forget their names. I know it's annoying. It is. It's gonna happen! <laughs> um, but you can try your best, and that's why how I try my best, is I just get a double friend to double check and draw a little happy face, or a star, or whatever theme for the snowman, it's winter! Um, and then, okay, so timer goes off, now it's clean up, that means that you can put up another timer, change it to, or get a, I never, you, okay, I always used to switch my um, self instead of me doing everything. I would have the kids help with this because it depends on the class. Like if you have a really responsible class, then you can do this a lot more. Um, but if I thought it was something that I think the kids could do, then I would get them to do it. They'd be like, hey, so-and-so, can you go change the timer to five minutes for cleanup? All right, everybody go. Um, pick your, this classroom needs to be perfect in five minutes and I need you at that door when that timer goes off in a perfect silent line. And then, you can practice this a hundred times. <laughs> and if they do it perfectly, give them a point. Maybe at 10 points, you can do like a free art day or some sort of reward. Bring them in a candy, I don't know. Whatever you feel like giving them, that's cool. Um, maybe a movie and while you're watching art. This is like in the back of school phase, right? When you're trying to encourage these routines, right? You're like, okay, if we do this perfectly 10 times and we nail it, we're gonna have a movie and art day where you guys get to draw and make art while watching a movie. All right, so you guys gotta earn it and be really, really good at during classroom time and during cleanup and making sure this classroom is perfect and lined up silently. And if you are, we gotta get 10, we get a point and at 10 points, boom. Oh my gosh, guys, it is art and movie day. Um, and that works. Right, that's your incentive at the beginning of the year. I don't like to go buy things every single time, right? So that's something that you can offer for free. And you, or it could be like art and outside. If you have really great weather, why can't you go make art outside? Whatever it is. And obviously it would be more of a free casual sketch day. And if they don't actually make anything, eh, it's okay. But you have trained them for the rest of the year. And that is powerful. All right, my friend. Uh, if you're looking for more um, effective systems and ideas for things like lesson planning, um, for classroom management, for increased student engagement, um, for engagement systems uh, and student participation, um, for how to be more productive as an art teacher to get things done so you have more free time for you, um, for classroom management strategies and more time management strategies, for proactive approaches, make sure that you check out my professional development course Art Teacher Academy. It will provide 10 professional development hours and a certificate of completion at the end. You can check that out by clicking the or scanning the QR code um, beside me here or um, hit the link in the description below the video and that will take you to Art Teacher Academy. You can also just Google Art Teacher Academy and you'll find it. It's me, Art Artastic and the Artastic Collective and you can check out my professional development course there. It's a great way to, um, and it comes with a, it's a great way to find a series of courses or lessons where I'm gonna help you just work through um, planning your year, learn TV, giving you, um, uh, teaching you how to do your scope and sequence, and then giving you all the templates to do that. It does come with a bonus art creation toolkit. Um, it comes with all the videos and the workbooks, and you can work through it at your own pace. Um, there is no time limit, so you will, once you gain access to it, you have forever access to it. So I would recommend that if you're looking for more of this and you want some more in-depth lessons, then check out Art Teacher Academy today. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you like this video and subscribe. Your next video to watch is Classroom Management Tips. 
You can watch it by clicking the link above or in the description of the video, and I'll see you in that episode.